What you guys got another video here for you on 10 steps to secure Windows 10. We're going to be taking a look at 10 things you can do to secure your Windows 10 operating system. And you should be following these types of uh, security measures. So first up, using local account. Now, although Microsoft Live account or Microsoft account is a very useful account, using the local account is a much more secure way of securing Windows 10. It says Windows 10 is better when your settings and files automatically sync, but this can be a security risk when you sync your files to Microsoft. So all of your settings will automatically be synced on all the Windows 10 devices that you're using on your local network. So I prefer to use a local connection. That way I'm not connected to Microsoft in any way, shape or form. If you need to log in, you can do it any time and then log out and then unsync your account. That's the way I prefer to use it. So next up, we're going to be talking about using a standard user account. That is another way of securing the way you use your Windows 10 operating system. Now, by default, uh, Microsoft Windows 10 will set up a user account as administrator. And this is a big no, no, especially in business uh, companies. They will use uh, user accounts, which are just standard accounts. So they lock them down and you should be doing the same thing at home. So to do that, what you need to do is create an admin account. So we're going to go ahead and add someone else to this PC. So I don't have this person's sign in information. So click on this link here. And then what you want to do is basically click on the add a user without a Microsoft account. And what you're going to do is give this an account name. I'm going to call mine admin. And there is an administrator account, which is already built in, which is disabled. But we're just going to create a new one here called admin and give it a secure password. You will need to put in some security questions and stuff like that. So go ahead and do that and make it nice and secure and then click next. And now you should see a admin account is a local account. Go in here and click change the settings here to administrator. And then we can click OK. Now that's our administrator account done. So what we need to do is check to make sure all the other accounts are disabled and we just want to do that by right clicking on the start button here and going to uh, computer management inside here. You'll see uh, the user account folder here. Just click on this one and click on users and you'll see the administrator account is disabled. Also, there's an account called Brightech, which is also the one we're going to make a standard user because this is the account we use every day. So go ahead and click on control panel and go into user accounts inside here you should see user accounts, click on this one again. And now what we can do is change this. So you can see it's an administrator and we don't want that to be an administrator. We want to make this a standard user. So click on here and leave the standard user radio button in there and click change account type. And we should be now set to local account. You will need to log out and log back in. But once that's done, anytime any activity happens on your computer, like you want to do something, you will need to basically put in a password which will be your admin password for that account because he's now a standard user so we're going to put a password on here as well that's always a good thing so i'm just going to go ahead and create a password uh, for this account you won't need to put all the security questions in just one little hint question and that's okay so we'll go ahead and put a password in here and once we've done that we can log out and log back in and we're all set that means any malware that comes down off the internet will not have administrator privileges to run straight away. And that's a really important thing because when you get malware onto the system, it does want to have administrator privileges. And as administrator, uh, by default, you're going to just let that installation go straight away with that malware and infect your PC. Now it's going to ask for permission to install. So let's go ahead and show you what happens. So when I click on this program to install it, it's asking me to put in my administrator password and that would be uh, me to put in my password, which is for my admin account, which I just created. So when I put that in, it'll let the installation go ahead and install. It's a little bit of a pain to keep doing that, but at the end of the day, it keeps you safe. And that's the main goal of setting up these security steps. Next, we're going to be talking about the next step, which is updating Windows 10. Now, this is a really delicate subject because Windows 10 updates can mess up your system. But what you need to remember is there's a difference between feature updates and security updates. And what we're interested in is making sure we have all the latest security updates 
for the computer. And that means that any sort of bugs or any sort of security flaws that have been found in software or in the operating system, these will be patched. The next one is to update all of the programs to the latest versions. And you can do that by using Patch My PC. Now this is a free piece of software you can use to keep all of the software installed on your system updated. This is important because if it's outdated, it will show up red and you can have this updating in the background automatically and it will keep all your browsers and software that you've got installed on your system updated. And that's important because if there's any sort of uh, holes or patches that need to be done on that software and it's not been patched or updated, you are now vulnerable. Also, if you're using software that has not got any more support to it because the creator has ceased support for that particular type of software. You really don't really want to use that software anymore because that can also lead to an exploits in the software, which people can find out. Next up, we're going to be enabling system restore. Now by default, it's now disabled in windows 10. So go into there, type restore and type create with system restore point. Now, once we've got this open, you can see here, we can click on configure highlight the drive you want to configure it on and then click configure and turn on system uh, protection. And also we're going to now give it a bit of current usage here. And there we go. That'll be just for this video, but you can give it more or less, whatever you want to do, click apply and okay. And now what you need to do is create a restore point. I'm just going to call this backup. You can call yours, whatever it is. So maybe that you're going to go ahead and install some software. And before you do that, you create a system restore point just in case something goes wrong. You can always roll back the system to a time uh, before you install that software where it's working properly. And hopefully you'll be back up and running in no time. Now, let's just take a quick look by typing restore here. And we'll go in here, put my password in and click yes. And this will show us the uh, restore point that we've just created here. So if I hit system restore, and now we click on next, you'll see the restore point we just created. And if you get used to creating restore points when you're doing certain things, they're good little safety nets to roll back if you've got problems. So next up, we're talking about backup, backup, backup. That is the most important thing to do on a computer. You can use free software like Iomi Backupper, which is a backup piece of software, and you can download this and back up your system. It's always advisable to back up your system and then back up to a source outside of your computer and then also maybe in the cloud or something like that you can always put it into three different locations just in case something goes wrong you can always use macro and reflect as well there's another free piece of software which is pretty awesome if you want to see videos on any of this stuff let me know in the comment section below another paid piece of software which is pretty good is called a Cronus true image 2021 this also has uh, cyber protection in it which is going to protect you against ransomware and this is my go-to uh, for backup and stuff like that. So if you're looking for a really good backup solution and also that gives you good protection, then Acronis 2021 is a good option. You've also got built-in backup software inside Windows 10. Let me just show you here. Type backup in the search and then you'll see backup your files to OneDrive or backup files using file history. You can add a drive and you can also set up some uh, backups here with the advanced settings. And this is it right here. Now, believe it or not, a lot of people still don't back up as much as they should. And that's when they run into problems. So it's always advisable to back up as much as you can on a regular basis. And that way, if anything goes wrong, like ransomware, or maybe uh, you have issues with your drive, at least you've got backups in more than one location. You should have three separate backups in three different locations. And that way you're not going to run into problems. Next up, we're talking about antivirus and firewall. This is going to protect you against ransomware, malware, adware, and all those nasties that you get on the internet today. Now you can use the built-in one that's inside Windows 10. This is Windows Defender. You can see here, it's inside here under Windows Security. It's okay. It's not the best solution out there, but it is free and it's built into Windows 10. The Windows firewall is lacking and it's not that great. You don't give you much control. And again, but there is some features in here which are pretty useful, like uh, ransomware protection, but it's not that great. And it doesn't do a good enough job, in my opinion, in protecting you against ransomware and other types of malware. You can see here, controlled folder access is here. And you would need to obviously put your password in. And again, you can set that up. But 
Personally, I would use a paid piece of software, with, which is something like Kaspersky or Bitdefender or Norton or McAfee or wherever it is you want to choose to use. Everyone has their own favorite antivirus program, and I'm not going to get into a debate which one is the best because everyone will argue until the cows come home. But Bitdefender has some pretty good offers on at the moment, and you can buy one of these. Total security is a pretty good option. Gives you five devices up to one year. Also gives you good protection. They also come with firewalls built into them. Another thing you might be interested in is anti-ransomware software. And this is for people that are always getting infected. If you get hit with ransomware, especially crypto ransomware, it's going to encrypt all of your data and that will be it. It can happen in split second and basically you would lose everything, especially if you don't have any backups. It can be leaving you in a real bad situation. So you can use some anti-ransomware software like this one or other types of software out there. Next up, we're talking about password managers. Now, these are quite useful for people that have lots of passwords and they want to use complex passwords, but they can't remember them. So you can make as difficult as you like. And LastPass will keep these nice and safe for you. These also use uh, authentication, like two-step authentication to allow you to get access to these uh, sites. And it will store all of your favorite sites in here with all of your passwords and no one's going to get access to them. This is probably one of the best free uh, password managers out there on the market. And you don't need to pay for this sort of stuff. This is really, really useful uh, software. And if you haven't got this, then definitely take a look at it. It's called LastPass and there's LastPass Authenticator and there's other ones which you can use as well. Now, someone put me onto this Orphy. You get the app on your phone and basically once it's on your phone, you put all the sites in that you want to put your two-step authentication onto and every time you go to log in it will send a message to your phone and you just get the code and put it in and you just log straight in very simple and easy to do really really useful uh, way of being secure online i do like this uh Orphy, and uh, i'm now using it for a lot of my passwords for a lot of the sites that i use on a regular basis now the next one is not for everyone, but a lot of people do like to encrypt their data. So encrypting your whole drive with BitLocker is a real good option. And this comes in Windows 10 Pro and above, and you'll be able to basically use this built-in software, which is called BitLocker and encrypt the whole of your drive. Just remember if you're gonna be doing this type of thing, that you need to make sure that you keep backups of the actual key, which you would use to unlock your data. If you lose this, all of the data will be literally locked inside and you won't be able to get access to it. So you need to keep this safe on a USB flash drive away from the computer and also keep it on a pen pad somewhere, which is nice and safe so that no one knows. And this will be used to unlock and unencrypt your data if you ever need to do that. Now, if you don't have Windows 10 Pro on above, you can use something like VeraCrypt if you're on Windows 10 Home. And this will allow you to do the same thing and encrypt all of the data on your PC. And it's really, really secure. And it's a great way of locking down your system if you're one of those sort of people that like to encrypt your data. I personally don't encrypt my drive, but if you do want to do it, then these are the two options available. Now, the last tip I'm going to give you is use really strong and long passwords with special characters and make sure you use different passwords for each type of thing that you use on the internet whether it be banking whether it be your google account or whatever it is use different account passwords all the time and keep them nice and secure and make sure you change them on a regular basis i think that's going to be about it that's 10 steps to secure windows 10 my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk thanks again for watching and i shall see you again for another video real soon bye for now